welcome back all right so in the last video we had sent the response from our sign uh, for our sign-in route back to the client that called it all right and in that response we sent a token we sent a token and the user object the, the user that's registered all right but before I get started um, I had realized that uh, there was a, there was a few things that I forgot to mention in in the other previous videos, and that is there's two there's two files that I want you guys to add into the Git Ignore. That's dev.js and db.js. Well, dev.js that was from the previous um, video. Uh, where okay, where was this? This was in the config file. That's right here. Okay, so that's where we had um, like the, the the JWT secret with the JWT expire. Now in in this dev file, we want to we don't want that we don't want to send that over into GitHub. Okay, that's anything related to like uh specific, like API keys or anything uh, that you need to have secure. In this case, you know uh, the secret. You don't want to expose that. Okay, so make sure that um, that you place this inside your git ignore dot git ignore file. Okay, and remember, we have two different git ignore files: one for the client for our React application, and then one on the server side. So for this specific one for dev.js, you have to go here to this. Uh, the one here in the root directory dot get ignore and you see here I added the node modules or also add make make sure you always add node modules there and um, DB DB by the way was also that was where we had the database connection string to connect to our Mongo uh, database uh, cloud server okay and then this is our dev um, uh, what I was mentioning over here where we have our secret JWT secret okay so make sure you insert those two files because you don't want again you don't want to otherwise uh, when you push this uh, code over to github that code will also be exposed uh, for anyone to for anyone to see all right so add those all right so let me close those back up all right all right so mark that off all right so Let's get started. So in this video, what I want to do is I I, I I essentially want to give an introduction or a short introduction into local storage and cookies. Reason being is because we will be I will be using the, both of these means to storage data. Now there are differences between these two. Okay, but let me go over here and. Um, if I was to go here, let, okay, if I was to go to my main application right here, okay, this is the, the, well, the home page. I haven't built anything yet for my home page, but if I go to the sign in right here, and I'm going to go, go up to uh, view, uh, go to the top and go to view. And if you go to developer and then uh, developer tools, you're gonna have the Google Console open what they call the Dev Tools, okay? And what you want to do is you want to click on this this tab right here, Application, and this is gonna provide you with. It's gonna show over here an area where it states Storage, okay? Now all all browsers are built in with a, a storage, a, a, a storage where you can have uh, data uh, stored on the browser, on the client machine, okay? Um, of course, I, I would say that the most common one most people know uh, or have heard of are cookies, right? Everybody heard, have heard of cookies, right? Um, I know for me, when I was getting started, I always thought something bad about, it was always, always bad stuff about cookies, but cookies is a form of uh, storage where you store data. And then here you see you got local storage, Okay, local storage is relatively what's well, newer uh, compared to cookies. It came out later, um, but there are differences again, as I mentioned. So one thing, um, one of the differences between local storage and cookies is that local uh, cookies has a, a a small amount of data that's allowed. Uh, so here, for example, here if I go op uh, go into cookies, I see over here there's. Um, some uh, name and value um, 
uh, slot here. And this is where your name and key value pairs will be. Uh, so over here in the name, you would have the name of the cookie and then value, the value of the cookie. And it's very similar over here to the local storage. You have a key and value, okay? But the thing is with cookies, um, I currently don't, don't have any cookies, but cookies has a limited amount of data that can be stored. And that is, uh, I, it's, uh, I believe it's 4,096 kilobytes of data that can be stored in your browser's cookies. Um, whereas local storage, it has uh, five me uh, megabytes, okay? So, so you have a, 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 a larger amount of data that you can store for local storage. Another thing is that, um, Local storage is it, when I, it, anything that's stored in local storage over here. Um, if I was to refresh uh, my browser, if I was to refresh my browser, all that data would persist inside. Uh, the data still persists even if I was to close this window. That data that's stored in local storage will persist. It will continue to live on. Whereas cookies, it does not. Okay. Um, what else so we have and another thing is that local storage is domain specific meaning that um that whatever data that you have stored in local storage is specific to that domain so for example uh google.com okay whatever data that's stored in local storage for google.com will be will be specific to that domain so that that data that's stored um if, if I was to go over to another website and find the, the, the name and, and the key value pair for that that was there for Google.com, it would not be there because it would only exist for Google.com. Okay. Uh, now, another thing is that local storage, it's the data that's stored in local storage, that data it can be read by the browser, by the browser only, okay, the client. Whereas cookies are really to be read by the server they're sent over the data is there is always sent over when you make an http request to the server that data is um sent over um to the server and the server can read whatever uh the data that's in there okay so that's the difference is that uh, again local storage the data there is specifically for browser and cookies are for server all right, and that's uh, that's essentially what it is. And um, so, and as I mentioned, these two are these two storages are what I'm going to be using in in the upcoming videos. Um, the local storage I will be using for. Let me refresh your memory here. Um, if you remember from over, oh, no, over here in our auth controller, we created our our sign in controller, right? And then towards the end, we were sending a response back to the client. That's this right here, right? We're sending back an object with a token. That's the JWT token and a user object, okay? This user object contains information about the specific user that is signed in. Their ID, the username, email, and role, okay? The ID is going to be used, it's going to be used for, uh, from the front end, when we when we decide to make some HTTP requests, we're gonna pass along that ID, uh, so that way we can use that ID to make uh, a query to the database, and we have that specific user. Um, username, username. Uh, you often see that used in applications where, uh, say, for example, over here in the menu bar, when you sign in, you see your username on the top. It says like "Welcome." Uh, uh, so and so, John Doe, uh, hello, John Doe, whatever, right? And that's uh, that's another example. That signed in user, the it's it, that your the signed in user stored in local storage, so you can that so it's able to to use that that information. Okay, uh, email. Uh, I really don't right now. I'm not sure what I'm going to use it for. I just but it doesn't make a difference. I'm still going to have it available just in case later on I have a use for it. And row we will be using row for the uh, for the client side because remember the row there's two sp there's two rows that could be possible. It's uh, uh, a, a value of zero which would indicate just a signed in user and a value of one which is an admin. Uh, okay, so those are two specific users. So I will use those to make. Um, 
to make a conditional check to say, okay, if it's assigned in user, then go to a uh, user dashboard. Otherwise, it's going to mean it's an admin. So go to admin dashboard. So I will be using that as an authentication check. Okay, so again, these are the two things that will be sent back to the client, the token and the user. Token will be stored in a cookie and user will be uh, stored in uh, local storage for the client side. And I didn't mention token, so token will be stored in cookies and the cookie, we will, by storing this in cookie, what's going to happen is, as I mentioned, that cookies are always sent with any request that's made to the server. So, so once this cookie, once this token is stored in the cookie, whenever I make a, a request to the backend to protect the routes, I, I'm going to use, I'm going to be using, I'm going to use, I'm going to create a, an express middleware that's going to check the token that's stored in the cookie and I'm going to validate that token and if that that token stored in the cookie is a valid token at that point then I, uh, the user will be able to uh, proceed and uh, get access to protected routes on the back end okay uh, I try to make that as clear as possible I, I hope that made sense but that is essentially that's pretty much what I got for you guys. Okay, so these two are being sent back to the client, and we will be using um, local storage. And and here you'll see a user object signed in user. And then if I was to go over here to the cookies, we're gonna have a name that's gonna say to uh, token, and then the value of the token that JWT token. Okay, so that's it for now. I'll see you in the next video.